Just 90 miles south of Miami, Cuba stretches around 750 miles from east to west. Christopher Columbus first spotted the island in 1492 and declared it the most beautiful land human eyes have ever seen. Today, it's the Caribbean's fastest growing vacation destination. The jewel of the island is its capital city, Havana, home to roughly one-fifth of the country's 11 million people. Situated on a coastal bay in the northwest part of the island, Spanish-built Havana is considered the center of all things Cuban. At one point, it was even the richest city in the Caribbean. But the revolution that began in the 1950s gradually took its toll. One of Cuba's most infamous and corrupt leaders was a ruthless dictator named Fulgencia Batista. In the face of extreme poverty, his riches and brutal reign eventually alienated even his supporters. Following a three-year struggle against Batista, Fidel Castro came to power in 1959 and eventually led the country into communism. Castro announced the victory of the revolution in this ornate presidential palace, located in the section of town known as Old Havana. Decorated by the famous Tiffany's of New York, it now houses the Museum of the Revolution. Castro was joined in his fight by an Argentinian doctor named Che Guevara. When he died for the cause, he became a symbol of liberty for millions. His popularity hasn't diminished over the years. Brightly colored artwork that celebrates the revolution can be seen throughout Cuba, and so can the effects of this political change. In some ways, life for the average Cuban improved after the revolution. Healthcare and education became available to everyone. Starvation was virtually eliminated, and athletics and the arts were finally recognized and supported. Today, government-sponsored theaters and art schools can be found throughout Havana. One of the most ornate, the Garcia Lorca Theater, offers a breathtaking setting to take in an opera or ballet. Like many revolutionary governments, Cuba has also invested in its athletes for reasons of international prestige and patriotic pride. Baseball is the Cuban national sport, and its players are among the best in the world. But not everything has changed for the better. Over the years, the U.S. embargo of Castro and his communist dictatorship has crippled Cuba's economy, and the absence of American tourists has been felt. Ironically, some believe it was a good thing that the lack of dollar-yielding tourists ultimately preserved Havana's character. One place where time seems frozen is a section of the city known as Old Havana. This square mile of quaint alleys, Spanish colonial palaces, and cobbled streets provides a welcome departure from the city's high-rise hotels. Spanish settlers first arrived here in 1511 and gradually transformed this town into one of the prized jewels of the crown. Today, many of its crumbling buildings are in desperate need of repair, and restoration efforts are underway. Its very name tells you that the Plaza Vieja is one of the oldest squares in this area, lined with elegant buildings from the 18th century. For many years, it was the site of a popular city market. Now, the real owners are the children who've made it their own playground. North of the Plaza Vieja is another aptly named square. Here in the Plaza de Armas, one can visit Cuba's oldest surviving fortress, the Castillo de la Fuerza. Dating from the 1500s, its tower carries the symbol of Havana, a woman holding a cross called the Hiradilla. Recently excavated cannons now surround the fortress.
West of the square is the Paseo de Martí, also known as the Prado. This wide avenue built in the 18th century quickly became the most popular promenade in the city. Along the avenue, you can relax in the pleasant Parque Centro. Here stands a monument dedicated to José Martí. This famous poet and national hero led a revolt against Spanish rule and died in the fight in 1895. Just a few years later, the United States took control of the island until Cuba established its independence in 1902. On the Prado stands a small-scale copy of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Completed in 1929, the Capitolio Nacional was once a symbol of American influence on the island. Its large dome and rotunda, interior walls and staircases are all exquisitely decorated. Old Havana is a great place to see some of the most surprising leftovers from the pre-revolution days. American cars of the 1950s. When gas is available, Cubans still drive these chrome-tailed relics, evoking the roaring atmosphere of an era gone by. The charm of these cars mixes well with many of the restaurants and bars that remain almost unchanged since before the revolution. Two of the most famous were frequented by author Ernest Hemingway, who lived in Cuba during the 1940s and 50s. The Floridita is known for its daiquiris, a cocktail of rum, lemon, sugar, and crushed ice, often described in Hemingway's stories. And the boisterous Bodeguita del Medio serves its own mojito, another rum drink with lemon juice, soda, and mint. Along the seafront to the north, Old Havana is bordered by a spectacular two-mile boulevard called the Melecon. Gigantic waves often crash along the seawall, adding adventure to the journey. Large hotels, famous nightclubs, local bars and taverns lie along this street that leads west to the more modern districts of the city. Anyone who visits Havana will quickly realize that music and dance are essential parts of Cuban life. During the 16th and 17th centuries, Spanish colonials brought African slaves to the island to provide the labor force. African rhythms mixed with Spanish guitar have created a distinctly Cuban sound. The mambo, rumba, bolero, and cha-cha-cha were, after all, invented on this island. These dances are still performed at the legendary Tropicana, the most luxurious cabaret in the city. Like other Caribbean islands, Cuba also celebrates Carnival, a raucous few days before the Catholic season of Lent that explodes with music and movement. Colorful parades and wild dance marathons mark the occasion.